Maybe they got the flu. Human trafficking. You remember three years ago when you were all saying, Andrew Tate, human trafficker. Where? Where? Name one girl. Where? Andrew Tate lost his composure in court today as reporters crowded around him, trailing him all the way into the courthouse. The journalists continuously asked the same repetitive questions they already had answers to, appearing to aim for a reaction. In the end, their efforts worked, and Tate confronted them head on. I have a book of more cars I'm buying because Decaught has stolen 30, so I'm going to buy 30 more while I sit in the Decaught office from my phone. So you're going to show the person you guys what cars are you buying? No, they'll see them on my drive when they come take them again. You come, uh, here is the uh, uh, best, uh, your friend, no? The no, best uh, friend I'm here at Decaught, no? No, do you drink coffee with a uh, persecutor? Uh, I don't know if they'll give us a coffee, but if you can bring a coffee here, I'd appreciate it. I'll bring it with them all. During the court session, Tristan shared that while he was in the courthouse, one of his so-called victims went to get coffee and handed it to his security guard, who then gave it to him. He pointed out that she still remembered how he likes his coffee. Tristan went on to say that there are no real victims and that the authorities have simply labeled women he knows as victims in order to extort money. I'm not a drink coffee, I'm sorry. Uh, only tea I drink. <laughs> Maybe in a castle human flu, yeah. trafficking. You remember three years ago when you were all saying, Andrew Tate, human trafficker. Where? Where? Name one girl. Where? Anyone? Anyone? No? It's been made up the whole time. You all knew it was made up. It's still made up. Clown show. You are uh, here, come with the victim. You are a what victim. victim. What victim? I'm you. The victim. It's wild how the alleged victims planning to testify against Andrew Tate have stayed completely anonymous throughout this entire ordeal. They haven't given any interviews or spoken publicly. Whenever they're shown, their faces are covered. Meanwhile, Tate's name has been dragged through the mud. The system claims that if Tate's supporters knew the victims' identities, they would likely harass them. You, you had a... Yesterday you spoke to one of the victims. You found her outside court. What did she say? They have this set up. This is illegal. The boys are innocent. I'm a victim. Keep talking to the girls. See what you find out. Ask, ask, ask the victims. Yeah, you'll see them in court. Uh, they all say... Yes, of course. They are. She told you to your face that this was a setup and a scam and the prosecutors declared her eviction the victim against her will. Excuse me, are you one of the alleged tape victims? Uh, yeah, I was listed as a victim and the court wants me to claim that I'm a victim even though I told them more than once that I'm not one. Tristan and Andrew were always very kind to me, they helped me many times and this is absurd. It's, it's unreal how far corruption can go when there is money involved and this is not normal. I really hope the justice will be made correctly and these men will get to live the life they deserve. To be honest, I'm feeling more of a victim of DCOT because they are uh, making me look like a human trafficking victim and I don't want to be pictured like that. The only time we've really heard from any alleged victims is when they're defending Tate. It's important to note that the individuals involved in the UK case, who are featured in documentaries, are not connected to the Romanian case. They have a separate civil claim against Tate in the UK. In contrast, the Romanian women involved in the case haven't spoken out, unless they are defending Tate. First of all, I would like to start by saying that there are no victims in this case. It all started April last year in 2022 when two girls that lived in my home with me locked themselves in their room and claimed to be held their hostage. But here's the facts. When the authorities and the police broke into their room, raided our homes, they forgot to mention something really important. And that's that the key was in their room on their bed. Now, I don't think it's just the victims lying anymore, it's the police as well. There is a reason why they don't want to put that certain detail in the files. And it's pretty obvious. This is all about some election in 2024 and the vacant spot for the DCOT leadership that the prosecutor wants. The police know that there was no crime and they are holding the Tate brothers locked with no evidence because they think it's good for Romanian politics. Now, the other two victims that the police claim to be involved in this case are me and Beatrice. And we have been given three statements so far, clearly saying we are not victims and we have never worked with or for Andrew and Tristan Tate in any way, but our statements keep getting thrown away. The police don't care about the truth. They don't listen to neither me nor Beatrice. Instead, they 
choose to listen to two girls that went on a luxurious vacation on the French Riviera a week or two after being rescued for whatever they claimed to be. Country is my beautiful. Country is my beautiful. Car that's worth less than these shoes to prove money laundering. You just make yourself look like idiots. The country looks stupid. No rich person with any influence or any money will ever move here again, ever. Why? So these people upstairs can make their career by trying to ruin my life. As Romanians, you should be upset at them. Wait, wait. That is a. Uh, buy more cars. Currently, the Tates will remain under house arrest for another 30 days as their case has been delayed once again. The judge has rescheduled the next court date for September 23rd, relating to the second Tate case. This postponement occurred because some of the alleged victims failed to appear in court. It's seen as a double standard. Imagine if one of the Tates missed a court date, they'd likely be jailed immediately. Yet these women, who haven't even provided concrete evidence, can skip hearings without facing consequences. They can claim fear or give other excuses, and it seems to be tolerated. Meanwhile, a lot of time is being wasted due to these delays and missed court dates. It's a very important time at DCOT. DCOT were desperate to get into my phones because they're trying to find conversations. Obviously, they know my brother and I are British nationals, and they're trying to find if Hugh Edwards has ever messaged us. Do you know who Hugh Edwards is? Cool. He works for the BBC along with, you know, this other guy who reports on things. He works yes. for the BBC. You know, all these clowns. Mercha. Yeah. Me and the child bottle. Hugh Edwards. This is what Decar are trying to find out about, Hugh Edwards. So you should look this up. H-U-W Edwards. Look him up. That's what all of this is about. But, no, but they were also, they were also your brother has... Every, every girl I know and they said, victim, victim, victim. The mother of my kids, victim. Oh, this is fake, Chachesco. I found it on the street. I buy, I buy it from a gypsy for 21 euros. Sure? Yeah, this one is fake. Of course, Decal took all my watches and money. This is fake, brother. It's fake. Fake. It's made of candy, actually. If I bite it, it's made of uh, sugar candy. One euro? This watch? Ah, uh, 20 euros. Ah, 20. Thanks. It will be fascinating to watch how the trial progresses, particularly with the women supporting Tate, who say they were treated fairly while working in webcam jobs or living with him. Will they be permitted to testify and offer a more favorable view of him to the jury, or will the focus remain solely on the accusations against him? The way the trial is organized will be key. Although no specific date has been set, we may see more updates toward the end of the year. With over 30 alleged victims and serious charges like human trafficking, the process may take a while. Stay tuned for more updates.